The idea of writing a book about the English appetite and the sort of British identity has been in my mind for a long time. But sometimes you put projects on the back burner. Sometimes um, you know that at some point you'll write a book about a particular subject. And for one reason or another, um, you put it away. A typical example was Toast, which I knew I was going to write my autobiography for years and years, but um, for a long time it stayed at the back of my mind, and I kept thinking, I might do it, I might not. And it, in many ways it's the same with, with Eating for England, that I knew at some point I'd do it because it's something that fascinates me, is the British culinary identity. I think I started writing it um, probably about three months after I said I'd started, um, just thinking about it and just getting the book sort of in my head that I was actually doing this. A book like that probably takes me a couple of years to write because I work very slowly. A cookbook can take me four or five years. In fact, I think there was five years between Appetite and The Kitchen Diaries. There isn't ever a plan, no matter how I like to think there is. It's all very disorganised and very chaotic, and I tend to write in um, I tend to write in big chunks. So uh, I'll do a lot for months, and then I'll put it on side for a couple of weeks, and then go back to it. With the type of books I write, and particularly I think with Eating for England, I can do a chapter and think, well, actually, I'm not quite sure how this is going to end, and I need to do a little bit more research, I need to rethink it, and I can put it aside and then go to another chapter. It's a bit like having a tin of biscuits, and you can just keep on taking out which bit interests you and, um, and eating a few of those and then nib nibbling something else, and then you just hope that at the end it all comes together. Eating for England is very much about the British and how they eat, and the best will in the world, you're going to write a book that um, takes in other people's opinions and takes in other people's ideas, but it is my book and I have made it a very personal one. And there's lots of anecdotes and lots of little bits of me um, that I think would always be in, in any book that I write. It isn't as personal as Toast, but if it's about what the British eat, then it's partly going to be about what I eat and what I've eaten. And certainly I'm telling the story of, uh, of the British at table and what is on their plates now and what has been on their plates in the past. And yes, I'm going back over, you know, whatever years of my life, um, looking at how my diet's changed. I'm a fairly typical eater. So I think it's quite right that I put uh, my experiences into the book. I heard, or should I say I overheard, a visitor to this country, another food writer, saying that the British don't have a food culture. And at the time I was really infuriated and I thought, well, yes, of course we have a food culture and I can tell you exactly what that food culture is. I know about the British appetite, I know what we eat. And our culinary identity, for me, was, um, was very strong. And then I started to think about it, and I started to write about it, and I realised that it's not as cut and dried as I thought. And in fact, our culinary identity is very complicated and very intriguing. And the more I wrote about it, the more I wondered whether... Well, I'm about halfway through the book, a little bit more, and I'm beginning to think that they may have been right, but we'll see. I honestly don't know yet. We've gone in the space of my lifetime from being a country that didn't discuss food, we didn't talk about it, to being a nation that is almost obsessed. You can't turn on the television, you can't open a newspaper or a magazine without reading about food. And we have become, I think, more than interested, not just about what we eat, but about what it does to us and, and how it affects our health and how it affects our lives and how it affects our position in society. And some of this has been brought about by cookery writers, um, I'm just as responsible as anybody else, um, for the goods and the good and bad 
uh, about our current food culture and what it is. And on the surface, it does appear that we are um, very knowledgeable about food and we're eating actually very well. But when you, when you scratch below the surface veneer of glossy cookery books and glossy TV adverts for food, when you get down there, it's actually proving to be very fascinating what the British really do eat and what, you know, where our culinary soul is. It's quite surprising, actually. The British eating habits, and particularly our shopping basket, has changed enormously from how it was when I was a kid. I suppose even in the last, even the last 10 years, uh, there's a very different picture uh, in our kitchens. But it is, it's quite intrigued me um, delving into what people actually cook and finding out um, all that wonderful stuff in the shop, what people are actually doing with it. It's actually proved very, very interesting um, how it's affected what we eat. And, you know, there is still a question over whether we are just this magpie nation that just goes around nicking other people's good ideas and whether in doing so we're actually abandoning um, the wonderful sort of heritage of cooking that we've got. And yes, there's some great and very exciting things happening in the food world, but whether they're lasting or whether they're part of that British thing where we go at something like mad and then drop it uh, remains to be seen. In the kitchen, I'm actually a bit of a tart. I actually will go for anything that just interests me. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's British or Chinese or Thai or French or Italian. If it's good, I'll eat it. And I just go for that. Now, I think that is probably becoming very much the way. I think that's how we are. The risk in that is that I'm actually losing out on the wonderful British stuff that, that I actually maybe didn't think was that interesting. And it's worth going back to it and, and rethinking it. There is, a, uh, there is a danger that there's almost too much excitement in the food world and that we are actually um, assuming that our stuff is bland and mild and gentle tasting. Um, I think sometimes we hide our sort of culinary light a little bit and think that everyone else's is better. So we'll steal, you know, pizza from Italy and we'll steal nice bread from France or whatever. We are, we are magpies, really. There's a lot of my favourite things that I don't eat because they're full of sugar or because they're full of fat or whatever and I don't eat them. And most of those things, almost everything that I really, really love has got a huge dose of nostalgia attached to it. So all of the things I talked about in toast, I actually really love them. I adore crumpets and butter, and I like humbugs, and I like all the things that I suppose really come with just more than their flavour. They actually come with a whole story attached to them, uh, and a story that, that involves my life. Um, those are the ones I really like. I don't eat them anymore.